You've probably seen those pads with fancy ads promoting their power, telling you how helpful they are and how they can really keep your laptop cool. Well, I experienced a cooling pad myself once upon a time. And today I'll tell you, is it worth buying? Is it actually helpful? Stick around because this video could be useful. Let's get into it. As usual, I like to give some background on why I decided to talk about this. My subscribers who've seen my older videos know that I had a mid-tier laptop when I was a teenager. As I explained before, that laptop wasn't great, but not terrible for games either. But like most laptops, it struggled with overheating and that often affected its performance. I remember after playing for 1 to 2 hours, it would heat up like crazy, as if someone lit a fire inside it. Honestly, it could work as a replacement for my room's heating system back then. And you know how it goes. When laptops laptops overheat, FPS starts to drop because of the power saving system affecting the GPU. The fans start spinning faster, pulling power from the GPU and CPU, which overall reduces performance. Eventually, the laptop starts lagging, thermal throttling, and on top of that becomes a mini heater for your hands. Back then, because my laptop's radiators were on the left side, my left hand always on the keyboard would get hot and uncomfortable. It even felt like it burned my hand and nerves. So I decided to fix the issue. I searched a lot, watched YouTube videos, googled, and asked people around me and on social media. Some told me to clean my laptop. That helped temporary. After cleaning, it still collected dust and started heating up again. Others recommended changing the thermal paste on the CPU. But it wasn't in bad condition, so I didn't think it would help. The final suggestion was to buy a cooling pad, which was new to me. It looked like a game changer after I watched a few reviews, and the design was convincing, so I decided to buy one, but I didn't consider something important. At first, I expected things to be much better. I thought my laptop would stop overheating, temperatures would drop by 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. Fan noise would decrease and everything would feel better overall. Plus, the setup would look cool with those RGB lights from the cooling pad. But reality hit hard. As soon as I bought it and turned it on, I realized the fans were extremely noisy. It created double the noise because my laptop was already loud. Still, I tried to ignore it and move on. I played some games to see if temperatures improved, but no, it dropped by maybe 2-3 degrees at first, then went right back up. At the end of the day, that purchase wasn't just useless, it was harmful. I basically bought extra noise and nothing else. But you're probably wondering what I didn't consider before purchasing it. The thing is, those fans are located at the bottom side of the laptop, meaning they are supposed to blow hot air from the underneath. But my laptop doesn't have air circulation holes on the bottom. That vent is actually placed on the right place. And that's probably why it didn't work. You might say I was down for buying the wrong type of cooler pad. But in fact, most of them are designed for bottom-facing ventilation. The problem is that many laptops are actually have their vents located on the sides or behind the display, which complicates everything. And here comes the most important question. Why don't cooler pads help your laptop stay cool? Well, it's not entirely the cooler pad's fault. To be honest, most laptops have very poor and tight thermal design that make it hard for them to stay cool. Generally speaking, no system in the world can stay cool forever. Even weak systems experience heat. The key is how the cooling system handles it internally. In desktop PCs, everything works much better. Most gaming PCs have at least two major airflow openings, one in the front and one at the back, and an actual CPU cooler inside the case. That cooler doesn't just manage CPU temps, but also helps move the air inside the system. Plus, modern PCs often include case fans that speed up circulation, which makes the entire airflow system more efficient. The reason all that works is because there's space inside a PC case. In laptops, it's the opposite. You have very limited space, usually only one or two fans, and those are tiny, weak, and often noisy with a high pitch. On top of that, most laptops only have one or two vents, and they are often so tightly placed or positioned, somewhere like the sides or back. But I'm not saying cooling pads are completely useless. There are a lot of different types, and each is made for a different kind of laptop. For example, single large fan pads are better for large laptops. Multiple small fan pads are good for laptops with off-center vent positions. Blower-style cooling pads, vacuum coolers, work better for laptops with side vents like mine. 
Passive cooling pads are made of metal and act like silent radiator for your laptop. So that's the full list. You just have to choose the one that matches your laptop's design. If you don't, it might end up being not only useless, but also annoying due to extra noise. And when should you actually buy one? In my opinion, about 70% of the time, they're unnecessary. They only really help if you live in a hot country or if your laptop gets so hot that you can't even game on it. But from what I've seen today, most laptops can handle heat decently, even under load. Throttling used to be a major issue, but now it doesn't hit as hard. Sure, your hands might still feel the heat if the vents are close to where you rest them, but even that can be solved. Just plug in an external keyboard and mouse, set the laptop further away, and boom, you're basically using it like a PC. So what did I do after purchasing my version of the cooling pad? Yeah, I just sold it because it was nothing more than decoration with blue LEDs. But anyway, if you're struggling with overheating on your laptop, I can probably suggest alternative solutions that might actually help instead of wasting money on expensive cooling pads. As I mentioned earlier, it's hard to keep such a tiny system cool, right? But there are a few things you can do to at least lower extreme temperatures. In laptops during gaming, 80 degrees Celsius is common. And while it sounds high compared to PC standards, it's actually considered acceptable for laptops. However, if your temps go up to 85, 95, that's quite high. If your laptop starts hitting those numbers regularly, the first thing you should do is clean it. I've noticed that after just 3-4 months of use, dust can build up fast, especially around the fans. Dusty fans can't spin properly and will interfere with cooling. So open your laptop and clean it, it's not that hard, and it really helps. You can also change the thermal paste on your CPU and GPU. If you didn't know, they are located right under the fans. Replacing thermal paste isn't very difficult, and it can make a noticeable difference in temps. These two actions alone can help stabilize your laptop's temperature around 80 degrees. Additionally, here are a few basic tips. Raise your laptop off the table to alone more airflow underneath and use it in a cooler room if possible. Of course, there are also things like undervolting your CPU or adjusting power settings to reduce heat, but personally, I don't like sacrificing performance just to lower temperatures. At the end of the day, it helps very little. The only real solution is to accept that 80 degrees is just normal for laptops. But if 80 degrees starts to feel uncomfortable, like it's hitting your hands, then there's one simple solution. Buy a PC, or if you already have a laptop, just buy an external keyboard and mouse and use it like a PC, keeping it a bit farther from you. And when you need portability, just unplug everything and take the laptop with you. So is it worth buying a cooling pad? Well, if you're okay with spending money on something that's mostly just decoration and barely effective, then sure. But if you understand how limited their actual impact is, then you already know the answer. Honestly, I think these things were designed more by marketers than by actual engineers who understand thermal systems. Those flashy ads, to me, they feel like a scam. Just my opinion. Because logically, I don't see how a pad with small external fans can significantly cool a closed, compact system like a laptop. And if you're desperate to drop a few degrees, I already told you, there's just no way to cool these thin machines beyond a certain point. 80 degrees is pretty standard when the GPU is working hard. So I guess that's it for this video. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel and take care.